Welcome to BW Business World. Today I have with me the Honorable Victor Videli, Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade of the Government of Ontario in Canada. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, first and foremost, I would like to ask you about your visit here in India. You know, you've, you're obviously here to work with um, governments of various states, signing MOUs, expanding on MU MOUs. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've been working on? Well, it's been an exciting opportunity to uh, rebuild because we were away since the pandemic so we're back here in India uh, just strengthening our friendships and you know continuing to work with our friends that we've created over the years. Can you tell me about your collaboration with the government of Telangana? Yes, one of the uh, MOUs with Telangana was signed in 2016 and, and recently then we updated it through amendments to include things like uh, elect electric vehicles and uh, artificial intelligence. Neither of those two were popular in 2016, so those have been added to the MOU uh, to acknowledge the changing ways of the world. Yeah, and you're saying that this is the second time you're coming here and obviously you had uh, another visit in 2016. What kind of impact did that collaboration have that made you want to come back and kind of and continue working with them? Well, other than the fact that the food is so good, uh, it's the fact that we really do have uh, very similar uh, uh, business relationships and very similar natures of how we do business and the kinds of businesses we're in. We are looking at life sciences, advanced manufacturing, and tech. They happen to be three of India's uh, choice uh, um, uh, areas of expansion as well. Yes, um, and while those are the areas of expansion, can you tell me a little bit about what are the strengths of Indian industry and businesses, and even skills for that matter, that you, know, you can kind of leverage in a global talent pool? It's just one of the number one life science uh, locations in the world. Most of the vaccines in the world are made here, so we have a lot to learn from Indian companies. Um, it is a, such a huge tech talent pool. Uh, a lot of ideas and a lot of opportunities. So uh, we look for any kind of collaboration uh, that we can have in life sciences and tech. But also there's so much um, going on in the infrastructure development here in the country that there's just too many great opportunities for companies worldwide to pass up. Absolutely. Now let's shift the conversation a little bit to Canada itself. Obviously it's a great destination for students to go study and eventually even work. Um, can you tell me in, in Canada or in Ontario even for that matter, what industries are you seeing the most demand in or like areas for job creation to happen? Well first of all there's 900,000 uh, people of Indian origin that live in Ontario and we have 75,000 students from India come every year and they come to Ontario because in, a, in, in Toronto, for instance, there's 150 languages spoken. It's a great uh, opportunity to live and explore and expand uh, in the businesses that we need them, primarily, again, in the tech sector. Um, we see, uh, we have 65,000 science, technology, engineering, and math graduates every year, but there's never enough uh, uh, employees to fill the thousands of jobs that are available in Ontario and so we see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people from India coming for the tech jobs. Absolutely there was actually an announcement um, that apparently Canada will be having 500,000 jobs annually available. Um, what is Ontario's role in that? Well Ontario is the largest province in the country about 40 percent of the population live in Ontario so the government the federal government has opened up to allow 500,000 uh, new immigrants annually and Ontario will receive proportionally 40 percent of that so we're ready to accept those immigrants we have several hundred thousand jobs open today uh, again skilled labor construction tech uh, just about every sector uh, is looking for people absolutely but other than the se all the sectors what are the main industries that are growing in Ontario right now we just signed in the last 22 months $16 billion in the electric vehicle uh, and electric vehicle battery sector. So we're going to see in the northern part of Ontario the mining 
and then a little bit to, uh, away from the actual mines will be the manufacturing of lithium hydroxide, which is necessary to make an electric vehicle battery. Uh, LG Energy Solution in South Korea announced a, and are underway now, building a $5 billion battery facility. Uh, Umicor from Belgium is building a $1.5 billion cathode facility. So it's all electric vehicles. We have five vehicle manufacturers in Ontario. People may not know that Ontario is the only province in Canada that makes cars, and we're the second largest auto jurisdiction in all of North America. So uh, it's all EV, batteries, technology, connected and autonomous vehicles, anything to do with the new e-mobility. Yeah, and generally the trend for um, immigration or moving to Canada is done through education. I mean, education is the obvious destination. Um, but you're, we're talking here about labor and yeah. working, and you also men mentioned uh, construction. Um, is there some new policy or anything that's being introduced to kind of help pave the way for these kinds of um, immigration? We just recently uh, heard from the federal government that we're, they're going to allow our numbers to change where we had a certain amount of immigrants that could come every year. They were in different categories. This will be employment immigration. So that number is going to grow drastically uh, thanks to the, the, the news from the federal government. And that's big news for anybody that wants to work in Ontario. Absolutely. And uh, could you tell me a little bit about the recruitment approach that Ontario has that makes it different from the rest of Canada, or is it the same across the nation? There are many similarities through, it's through the federal government, but we do have uh, some specific uh, immigrant nominee programs in Ontario. But, uh, you know, I'm not an immigration lawyer, and so I would suggest that uh, people follow the normal practices, but just know that the volume is going to increase and that we're going to need more people and we're going to accept more people. Yeah. And we have kind of discussed this, but in your own words, if you could tell me, like, what kind of synergies do you see between the Indian uh, economy and the Canadian co economy, and how can the two countries kind of, like, leverage th these with each other? Well, in the life sciences sector, we've seen a huge um, uh, uh, development here in India, um, and we're, we're obviously trying to mirror some of that. We, l we learned a lot through the pandemic. We learned a lot about what we didn't make in Ontario anymore. Personal protective equipment, PPE. When, when the pandemic hit, we suddenly and unfortunately found out we don't make masks, gowns, face shields, ventilators, uh, hand sanitizer. We didn't make any of that in uh, Ontario anymore. And many countries were very protective of those products. So we began uh, asking uh, companies like our auto sector to pivot and begin making all of those things while we set up companies to do that on a permanent basis. So we went from making almost none of it to today we make 74% of all PPE in Ontario now. So we've seen a real shift and so we know that life sciences will be an important segment. And manufacturing us. for that matter it sounds like. And, uh, and manufacturing and medical devices manufacturing as well. So we're doing a lot, I hate to use the word reshoring, but we really are. Uh, we're making a lot of products in Ontario today that we should have been making all along that we stopped making. Yeah, and on that note, because um, I can imagine that the skills required for these specific industries can be um, very unique. So even if you have people coming in from abroad, you still might have to train them or skill them. Do you have any kind of uh, training programs on a government level available, or is this industry specific? We have tremendous, uh, in fact, hundreds of millions of dollars that the government, our provincial government, continues to put into skilled development, skilled training. Um, we have both a university system and an applied college system and we're really putting a lot of money into the applied college system because we need people trained uh, to do specific tasks that are skilled labor and so we're we we've put our money where our mouth is and we're putting hundreds of millions of dollars into skill training absolutely and you know one of the biggest barriers for any kind of movement um, is language um, so how much importance or how much emphasis do you put on this factor You'll find in Ontario, being such a multicultural and very diverse population, you know, we have, uh, we used to call it English as a second language, but we tried to explain, most people already speak more than one language, so it's 
English, English language services uh, are a big part of what our settlement services offer in, in our immigration. Yeah. Um, and here in India, I mean, you're working with Telangana, of course, but do you plan on working with any other states? Yeah, there are several others that um, we are in the middle of, uh, so I won't break any of the confidences, but there are several other that we are working on uh, a, a memorandum of understanding with. There are so many billions uh, in India being spent on infrastructure that we want to make sure that uh, our Ontario companies can come here and do work, whether it's engineering or design work or actual uh, um, uh, implementation uh, because certainly companies from India are very welcome to come to Ontario and bid on our work as well. Absolutely and you know my final question is you know uh, obviously our government is also doing a lot to kind of ensure that we have more you know business collaborations that we can work on a global uh, scale with other countries. What kind of initiatives would you like to see our government make that would kind of help um, get this process along? A couple of things. First of all, just what we're doing today, we're talking uh, about uh, Ontario and India relationships. I think that's important that we continue having that public dialogue, but also the governments themselves, government to government should be talking a lot more about what are your best practices? What did you learn, say, from the pandemic that we could learn? And I think we started to do a lot of that collaboration online during the pandemic. Um, with the uh, 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 India-Canada Business uh, Council, as a for instance. We did great work uh, and collaboration where we were able to see many Ontario companies invest here in, in India, and we saw several Indian companies um, decide to open shop in Ontario as well uh, in the tech sector. So I think just more collaboration and more open dialogue, I think it would be very helpful. All right. Thank you so much for taking time out today and speaking with me. And we look forward to more collaboration between uh, the two countries. Thank, Thank you. you.